Hi, and welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. I'm your host, Matt, and in this episode, we're gonna compare and benchmark the GeForce GTX 970 and the Radeon R9 390. Last week, we compared the GeForce GTX 960 to the Radeon R9 380 to determine which was the best $200 offering. Out of the 22 games tested, the R9 380 was faster in 80% of them, and as a result, the GTX 960 was an average 6% slower at 1080p. That being the case, we declared the Radeon R9 380 as the winner. After posting that video, I've received an overwhelming number of requests for a similar comparison featuring the GeForce GTX 970 versus the Radeon R9 390, so most of my week has been spent benchmarking to make that happen. The benchmarks focus solely on frame rate performance, though in picking a winner, we'll be taking into account power consumption and overclocking potential too. Speaking of which, based on our own findings, the R9 390 is an average capable of a 15% overclock, while the GTX 970 is slightly better, achieving a 20% overclock on average. Overclocking might not sway us one way or the other, but power consumption is a real consideration, and this is where Nvidia has a real advantage. The Radeon R9 390 consumed, on average, 40% more power in our testing when comparing entire system consumption. This is obviously a significant figure, so it'll be interesting to see how their frame rate performance compares. Testing with just a few select games doesn't really give you the full picture, so for this head-to-head -head battle, we've selected 22 of the latest and most popular graphically intense games to run the 970 and 390 through. Testing takes place at 1440p as well as 4K, although neither of these GPUs are really intended for 4K gaming. On top of that, we'll be testing each game with two different quality settings. For example, Battlefield 4 was tested using the maximum in-game quality settings with two times multi-sample anti-aliasing enabled, and then again with AA disabled completely. The Witcher 3 has been tested with Hairworks enabled and then disabled, while Tomb Raider was tested with and without Tress FX. Both GPUs were tested using a Core i5 6600K processor under a fresh install of Windows 10 with the latest drivers installed. All of that being said, let's jump into the benchmarks. The 970 averaged 48 frames per second at 1440p, making it 6 frames per second faster than the 390 in Metro Redux, a 14% performance advantage. Disabling tessellation eliminated the 970's performance advantage as the 390 became 3 frames per second faster with a total of 59 frames per second. With Tress effects enabled, the 970 was actually faster than the 390 with an average of 55 frames per second, making it 7 frames per second or 15% faster in Tomb Raider. Turning Tress effects off still saw the 970 lead the 390 by 7 frames per second at 1440p. Battlefield 4 was tightly contested at 1440p. Both graphics cards rendered 59 frames per second with 2 times MSAA enabled. Disabling anti-aliasing played into the hands of the 970, which was now 8 frames per second faster than the 390, with a buttery smooth 79 frames per second. Thief played best on the 390, as it delivered 53 frames per second on average, making the Radeon 4 frames per second faster than the 970. Turning SSAA off significantly increased performance as expected, and now the 390 was just 2 frames per second faster than the 970. Again, we find another tight battle between these two graphics cards, this time when testing with Watch Dogs. Here the 390 was just a single frame faster than the 970. Turning off HBAO improved performance by 26% at 1440p and saw both graphics cards deliver an average of 68 frames per second. The 390 was clearly faster in Hitman with an average of 67 frames per second, while the 970 was good for just 55 frames per second, making it 18% slower. Testing Hitman with FXAA didn't change the performance margin at all, as the 970 was still 12 frames per second slower than the 390. Using the very high quality settings or lower, the 970 averaged 73 frames per second at 1440p in GTA 5, making it 11% faster than the 390, which managed 66 frames per second. Reducing the quality settings to high allowed both graphics cards to average above 90 frames per second, though the 970 was still faster, albeit by 3 frames per second. The 970 was good for 71 frames per second in Civilization Beyond Earth, making it 6% faster than the 390 with an average of 67 frames per second. Turning anti-aliasing off again saw a 4 frames per second separation in favour of the 970 between these two graphics cards. The 970 was 7% faster than the 390 when testing with Total War Adela, although we should point out that this was just a 2 frame per second difference. 
Reducing the quality preset from extreme to quality allowed the 970 to render 45 frames per second on average, making it 4 frames per second faster than the 390. Both graphics cards average 37 frames per second at 1440p in The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt with Hairworks enabled. Turning off Hairworks favoured the 390 which was now 2 frames per second faster than the 970 with a total of 46 frames per second. Testing with Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor saw the 390 average 59 frames per second and the 970 58 frames per second, so it's fair to say things were very even in this title. That said, using the very high quality preset, the 390 became 5 frames per second faster than the 970 for a very playable 67 frames per second. Assassin's Creed Unity is a game like Hitman Absolution where the 390 demonstrates a serious performance advantage. This time with an average of just 33 frames per second, the 970 was 18% slower than the 390 which sat more comfortably on 40 frames per second. Turning off percentage closer soft shadows and screen space ambient occlusion helped the 970 out quite a lot and now it performed within 1 frame per second of the 390. Like most of the games tested thus far, we find that the performance is very competitive between the 970 and 390 in Crisis 3. The 390 was just a single frame faster at 1440p with an average of 40 frames per second. Changing 2 times SMAA for FXAA improved performance dramatically as the 390 was now good for an average of 59 frames per second, again just 1 frame per second faster than the 970. Yet again we find almost nothing separating these two graphics cards, this time in Dragon Age Inquisition. Here the 390 was just 1 frame per second faster than the 970 with an average of 48 frames per second. Disabling anti-aliasing entirely really helped out the 970 which was now found to be 4 frames per second faster than the 390 with an average of 70 frames per second. Just a single frame separated the two graphics cards in Armour 3 as the 970 rendered 53 frames per second opposed to 52 frames per second for the 390. Turning SSAO off along with anti-aliasing, the 970 was able to pull 8 frames per second ahead of the 390 with an average of 79 frames per second. The 970 was 4 frames per second faster than the 390 in good auto sport with 4 times MSAA enabled. Changing the anti-aliasing method from MSAA to CMAA played further into the hand of the 970 which extended its lead over the 390 by 8 frames per second. Both graphics cards performed very well in F1 2015 with an average of over 60 frames per second using the maximum in-game quality settings. The 390 was the faster of the two with 67 frames per second giving it a 2 frame per second performance advantage over the 970. Lowering the quality settings saw the 390 beat the 970 by a single frame. Far Cry 4 was dominated by the 390 which averaged 39 frames per second making it 6 frames per second faster than the 970. Changing HBAO to SSBC while also setting the anti-aliasing mode from MSAA to SMAA allowed for quite a bit of extra performance. Despite these changes, the 390 maintained a solid lead over the 970 as it enjoyed a 6 frame per second advantage. The 970 averaged 48 frames per second in Dying Light, making it just 3 frames per second faster than the 390, or 7% faster. Turning off anti-aliasing, depth of field and HBAO allowed the 970 to extend its lead over the 390 out to 6 frames per second. Just 1 frame per second favoured the 390 in Sleeping Dogs as it averaged 42 frames per second opposed to 41 frames per second for the 970. Turning off SSAA and reducing the FXAA level to normal significantly boosted performance at 1440p though the 1 frame per second performance margin remained. As expected, the 970 delivered a considerable performance advantage in Project Cars with 56 frames per second making it 9 frames per second faster than the 390. Reducing the anti-aliasing mode from MSAA and SMAA to FXAA we see a reasonable gain in performance. The 970 was now able to average 70 frames per second though this meant it was just 4 frames per second faster than the 390. Finally we have Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and here we find more competitive results. The 970 was just 1 frame per second faster than the 390 with an average of 58 frames per second. Disabling SSAA and using FXAA rather than SMAA performance virtually doubles though the 970 was just 1 frame per second faster than the 390. The battle for the best value $300 graphics card was closely fought, though in the end we feel Nvidia won this round due to the GTX 970 being the more efficient graphics card. Breaking down the frame rate performance, we found things to be truly neck and neck between the 970 and the 390. Of the 22 games tested, the 970 was the fastest in 10, and coincidentally, so was the 390, with two games resulting in a tie. Not only was the number of title wins even, but so too were the performance ratios. 
Of the 22 games tested, there wasn't a single frame on average separating the two graphics cards. Using the higher quality settings at 1440p, both the 970 and the 390 averaged 52 frames per second. Meanwhile, reducing the quality settings saw both cards average exactly 71 frames per second, which is quite amazing really. Another way of looking at it would be to say that in games where the 970 was faster, it was an average 9% faster. Likewise, the games where it was slower, the 970 was an average 9% slower. It was also interesting to find that at 4K, the 3.5GB 970 was so competitive with the 8GB 390, again on average nothing separated the two. So even in memory demanding situations, the 390's 8GB memory buffer is of little consequence. I'm not defending Nvidia's choice to advertise the 970 as a 4GB graphics card when it can really only efficiently address 3.5GB, but it has to be said that this doesn't impact performance in any meaningful way. The only reason we could see gamers going for the 390 over the 970 at the same price would be for Crossfire performance. That said, we're not entirely confident Crossfire 390s would beat SLI 970s. In the end, it's the GeForce GTX 970's superior efficiency that sees the Radeon R9 390 consume on average 40% more power that gets it over the line. Well, I hope that settles the $300 performance GPU battle for now. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments and please let us know if you'd like to see more GPU comparisons. This has been Matt for Hardware Unbox and as always thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please don't forget to hit like and even consider subscribing to check out our future content as it's released. Yeah.